Hello, and welcome to another edition of Pelham School District Today. Today, we have uh, some of our teachers from Pelham Elementary School, as well as our principal, to talk to us a little bit about Science Buddies. Um, we have Ms. Liston, we have Ms. Henderson, and Ms. Cummings, along with our principal, Mr. Adamakis, joining us. And so, how did the idea for Science Buddies come about, anyway? I will defer to Mrs. Cummings. She came to me with an idea. I'll let her explain the idea and then my rationale for letting it happen. Okay. <laughs> well, I spent a lot of time um, trying to think about how we can get more science into the younger grades and the, with the younger students because they are natural scientists. And I know that those teachers spend a lot of time uh, working on reading and math. So I was trying to think of this whole idea of STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. And um, I know that we had done reading buddies in the past, so I thought, why couldn't we do science buddies? So I um, came into Tom's office all excited and said, just please go with me on this. And he said, okay, how are you gonna do it? And uh, it went from there and we had eight teachers in the younger grades um, were enthusiastic about it. And then there are three fifth grade classes that do it. So we were excited. Great. We tried, yeah, we tried, we tried to, emphasize all year to try something new and as Rebecca mentioned we have done reading buddies in the past and this was just a new opportunity and my only question was well what's this going to do to the schedule what's that going to look like and uh, is it going to impact the core subjects at all and they've worked very hard to to not take that instructional time away and to work in and support the curriculum which Rebecca will talk about later but uh, it was it was a no-brainer it was something new and exciting and we said we'd follow up at the end of the year and see if it worked and and how we can build upon it. So we can also talk about that later. But Great, because this is towards the end of the year, so mm -hmm. I'll be looking forward to mm -hmm. hear that. Um, you know, that is one of the things in order to encourage creativity in our classroom, we want to encourage our students to take risks. And from our perspective as leaders, in order to, in, to um, encourage creativity from teachers, we want to encourage you to take risks. And this, this was a risk. You know, let's try something new. We're going to take, a, you know, a number of grades, put them together. How, what grades did participate? We had grades um, one through three participated, okay. and then the fifth grade classes were mentors, the three fifth grade classes that did it. But we had um, students from first grade to third grade that wanted to do it. Okay. How did, how did um, this help the younger students? Well, in first grade, we start our year with a unit on what is a scientist and we look at all different types of scientists and what they study and what they do and the names of those scientists, biologists, meteorologists, the kids are very excited about hearing those big words and then we naturally help them see themselves as scientists. So because they're already so curious about the world to begin with, it's, it's a very natural step to go into sciences and have these science buddies come in and be able to keep that wondering moving and going for them so they don't lose that excitement they have about science when they're young and hopefully they're going to take that with them as they grow older and it's nice for the fifth graders because they revisit how that feels and they get to be in a mentoring position and model what scientists do and they really um, invest a lot in planning the lessons I'm I've just been a facilitator and sort of giving them a subject area and saying, now what could we do with our science buddies? So it's a real great higher order thinking process for them and they get their self-esteem goes way up. They really enjoy doing that. Um, can you give some examples of some science buddy lessons that, that were done? Well, um, Mrs. Henderson and, and I are teamed up as science buddies, and this year we spent some time investigating sound and how sound travels. Um, we had students bring in um, some recycled materials from home, and we made musical instruments out of them and made observations um, about the types of sounds that they made. Um, and we actually got to have a little band session with the kids at the end, which is a lot of fun. Um, and we looked at the sound waves. We, we looked at, at an app on the iPad so they could see what kind of sound wave was made by their particular instrument that they created. Mm -hmm. And they thought that was pretty, pretty neat to be able to see that sound wave. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think for me it's been really interesting to listen to the questions that students are asking as they're experimenting. 
and my fifth graders have been blown away by the first <laughs> grade questions. Yeah. Um, so we've taken it one step further and used technology to try to do a little research um, once we have the inquiry part down. Um, and it's been really fun to think about how can we find more answers to our questions. Excellent. So our first graders were allowed to go up and observe Kate's class doing their genius hour. And it was great because they got to visit all of the little groups and see the projects that were going on in her class. And they got to show us what they were doing. And then we came back to our room and um, started to devise our own questions. What are we curious about? So we had a little what we called curiosity corner. And they came and then helped us do some research about what did we want to find answers to. So that's been great to bring the technology piece into it as well. We also have our, our friend here, one of our robot friends. I don't know if you want to tell us about Dash and what well, we've done. Yep, we have two robots. We have um, Dash and Dot, and students can learn some programming skills um, and, and do a little bit of inquiry as they try to figure out how can they have these robots um, achieve certain goals. So it brings in that technology piece as well with the inquiry. One of, the, one of my favorite things that happened this year was um, I've always used uh, Superworms as sort of an observation tool with my fifth graders. And um, this year, my fifth graders led Mrs. Cheryl Andrews' class through researching what happens to a superworm. And lo and behold, they become beetles. So Mrs. Andrews' class and my class did all the research and then designed a you know, set it all up so that they actually did become beetles. So uh, we have pictures of these superworms in every stage. And Mrs. Andrews was so enthusiastic that it was over February vacation and she was texting me saying, we have beetles, we have beetles, <laughs> I can't wait to get back to school. And, um, you know, she took a lamp and made sure they were warm. And it, just to see that enthusiasm, because I love to collaborate you know with other teachers and students so it's been really fun to go to the other side of the building yeah. <laughs> um, you had mentioned a little bit about genius hour yes. and that's not necessarily something we were talking about but yeah. Kate could you give us a little bit of a kind of an overview what is genius hour in case somebody's watching and they're like what are they talking about <laughs> well genius hour actually started um, with the company Google and um, Google allows uh, their employees to spend a certain percentage of their time um, coming up with a project to benefit the greater good of the company. Um, but it's an idea that's catching on in schools as well, um, where students think about a real world problem. And they come up with the problem and they do a little bit of research um, and ultimately create um, something that's an answer to that problem or some type of solution or new invention. Um, and it's just been really invigorating to see the types of um, problems that students are noticing and their solutions. So we've had all different types of projects this year, and I think, again, the first graders, their ideas are just absolutely wonderful. So um, it ties in perfectly with what Mrs. Cummings has been doing. And it just channels you know, the fact that students are natural scientists and they observe things about the world that you know, sometimes adults might not might not know this right away. So it's been very beneficial for us as teachers, too. What are some of those neat projects, or problems they identified, <laughs> I should say? Well, um, students do a lot with recycled materials and thinking mm -hmm. about other ways that they can use recycled materials, be them, it could be instruments, um, it could be creating a toy. We've had students create um, motorized cars, little toy cars out of uh, recycled bottles. Um, we've had students try to come up with a prototype for windshield wipers on glasses to keep the raindrops <laughs> off of their glasses. That's a great idea. Yeah. 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 And they have to be fashionable, too. So <laughs> <laughs> um, we just try to encourage these ideas as much as we can and tie them in with the curriculum and research skills. So yeah, it's been fun. So it sounds very exciting and things like that. We're always talking curriculum. So how, how does this actually tie in with our existing curriculum? It's, it's actually been easier than I thought it would be mm -hmm. um, because one of the things that I really stressed to Tom when I went to him and pitched this whole idea is that it wasn't going to take away from um, teachers' time with, with all these other core subjects and um, we, we enhance what they're doing. So I always check in with my teachers and say, what do you have coming up? And one example is um, 
Cheryl Andrews was going to be doing plants in a couple weeks. So I said, well, why don't we come in and show you some of our science journals and what we can do with science journals so your kids can keep track of what happens once they plant their beans and seeds. And we did this whole kickoff with what's inside a bean that will make it grow. And the kids um, have used a lot of the digital microscopes and technology to try and investigate that. But once again, that came right from my students. Um, you know, I said to them, hey, what do you think they're going to be doing th this project coming up? Oh, well, they should have a journal and they should do this. And so we picked out some journals to take and show them. Um, so we really tie it into what they are doing. But it's, it doesn't take away from what we're doing because then we're showing them, you know, you do this in first grade, but then in fifth grade you get to do this. So um, it, it's, it's been wonderful. Um, so does anybody have, how about a favorite lesson? <laughs> I, <laughs> I will probably say superworms, and I will admit at first, I, I was a little skeptical about using live worms <laughs> with students, but um, the superworms ended up being really fascinating. And I think when you use the digital microscope to see them up close, you notice so much detail in what makes them really special. Um, so it's really seeing the world through the eyes of a child and um, what makes them so unique. And for me, I think that was a favorite lesson. Can I jump on that? I, I actually saw the, the beginning stage of the superworm lesson. I was mm -hmm. in Mrs. Andrews' classroom when it was presented, and the way it was started was to asking the first graders, what do you think a superworm looks like? And they had to draw it out, and the, oh, the yeah. drawings are priceless, just, yeah. you know, big worms with the Superman logo yeah. and the yeah. superhero concepts that were, that were thought to be not anything what, and I had never seen a superworm up close either, so uh, Mrs. Cummings brought examples of those as well, so. It was pretty, uh, just to see where it started and now where it has evolved. So that was, that was kind of fun to see. And I think I asked my children this morning what mm -hmm. was one of their favorite things. And they really enjoyed working with Dash and Dot mm -hmm. because that was their first introduction was through our science buddies. So we got to see some of the things they did and just the general things. And then they took it from there. Our first graders took it from there as to what they wanted to do with it. But they had had, a, had some experience programming because we have um, what's called a B-Bot. We have B-Bots in our class mm -hmm. and we program those. And they were just amazed at what now we can do with another type of robot. Mm -hmm. So that was one of their favorite things that they got to do this year. Mm -hmm. I think it just, in, you know, what my favorite thing is the superworms. Of course, I feel um, very excited about that because of getting them to the beetle stage. But. Um, <laughs> You know, that was, that was just huge. Um, but this whole idea of empowering students, they get so engaged when we let go a little bit and just become the facilitators. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the fifth graders just take off with this idea. I had one student who um, we went to Ms. Galvin's class, and his younger sister is in it. And I said, oh, you know, I understand you probably won't want to be with your younger sister. No, I do. I want to <laughs> be with my younger sister. And, um, you know, that was like his favorite time of the month was when we, he got to be the big brother and the mentor mm -hmm. in science. And you just see a whole different side of your students when they are given this responsibility and, um, you know, their ideas are, are showcased in this way. So I think overall that's my favorite part of it. That's exciting. So would you say it's successful? Oh, yes. So how, why would you say that? I'll say just enthusiasm um, and hoping that it will be contagious. I mean, just the, the, the collaboration that I've seen with the older grades and working with the younger students, the enthusiasm and, and the learning that's gone on. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, a few teachers that are starting this, in this initiative and hoping to see it spread and I, there are already people that are expressing interest on joining next year as long as the, the principal gives them the go ahead on continuing <laughs> this I'll have to have a chat with him but the uh, so I mean I, I, I base it as successful just in seeing it's a new idea and uh, people are willing to continue and jump on board. Yeah and I think there really is um, there's no end to this you could have tech buddies you could have math buddies and it's this idea of collaboration um, you know we're lucky enough to have such a large school and a large student body with so many different options with teachers and there's um, 
you know, teachers have so many different skills. So it's a great way to connect. And, um, and we, with technology, with Google Classroom and Skype, we could actually have science buddies that go to other schools and other districts. Um, so I just, I'm excited about it. And I'm excited that my, my um, administration supported it to begin with. And I, I feel it was a success because when I asked my students what they remembered about Science Buddies this year, they could tell me every single time we met and everything we did. So I, I felt like it made a real impact on them. And they feel a real connection now to another group of older students in our building. So when they see them in the hallways, it's, I mean, it's a huge thing. Oh, there's our Science Buddies. You know, they know who they are and that that's important for first graders to feel that in in a big building such mm -hmm. as ours to feel the, the so kind of safe connection exactly yeah. they have a great connection to that and they also have to learn to communicate with the fifth graders in a different way than they might communicate with their family at home with their peers in the classroom it's it's a different type of back and forth with them mm -hmm. so. I love when the little kids say hi to me and they know my name yeah. that didn't happen before right yeah, yeah. I think for me, um, it's been really fun to see how learning gets personalized through this process um, because we start out with basic ideas for an inquiry lesson and from that basic idea, students come up with other experiments that they want to try. Um, so I think having that personalization and having it be somewhat student focused has been really successful and I think the idea that they're continuing to think of experiments after the fact shows that it's been successful for me. And extremely well organized by mm -hmm. the fifth grade team oh, that have been brought them to us because they don't they don't come to us unprepared at all. Their children are prepared to guide us through whatever we're doing. So it's very important. Well, we were very conscious about not making more work for you. You know, this we you know we really wanted we pitched it to Tom and pitched it to all of you that this was going to help you rather than give you more work. So I'm glad to hear that. So where do you envision this going in the future? I'd like to see it continue and um, hopefully grow the program to some of more include more of our younger grades. The enthusiasm we could have filled the room with some of the other teachers that wanted to. Mm -hmm. I says, well, Mr. Greenwood only has so many seats, so we had, <laughs> we uh, we wanted to make sure we you know was intimate enough where we could share these details. But I want to see it expand now that we know that it can work. Um, I don't know how much more work that's going to make for Mrs. Cummings. Um, and our other fine teachers that are involved, Ms. Liston, Mrs. Henderson, and uh, hopefully we get some more grade five teachers to help out. Um, that's my hope, and I'm sure you must have some ideas to include on where you want to take this. Well, like I said, I just think this whole idea of, you know, um, creating this venue for STEAM to really take hold from the time kids are in first grade or kindergarten, and, you know, modeling what it is, not just what scientists do, but what the new students do in this age of, um, you know, technology and innovation that we didn't necessarily have access to when we were students. And it's so exciting to watch them become so engaged, you know, and give them the opportunity to, to work with kids of all ages. And I, I also want to point out that we have high school students that are going to come and mentor I, our younger kids. Um, some of the high school teachers have expressed interest in having some of their students creating lessons for the fifth graders, mm -hmm. which would be really great to have a flip side of that, you know, mm -hmm. where they now become mentored too. So it'd be great to connect the whole district. That's sort of my dream. Excellent. As I was sitting here thinking to myself, hmm, we, you know, we have three buildings, so you can <laughs> easily do right. this. We already have, uh, Mr. Lane is coming down, He's, he started this last year working with our third grade students. They come down and, and conduct some inquiry activities, so, and I know that's scheduled for later in the spring as well. Excellent. So, yeah. that, like, that connection with all three buildings is, I think that's important. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much for joining us, sharing with us such an exciting opportunity for the students. It sounds like they have really progressed in their critical thinking, their problem solving, um, and I can't wait to see what else happens. <laughs> and thank you for joining us for another edition of Pelham School District today.